He took the bread and he broke it and said to his disciples, Take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body. <clears throat> After supper was ended, he took the cup and he blessed it, giving thanks. He said to his disciples, Take this, all of you, and drink. For this is the cup of my blood, which will be shed for the remission of sins of many. Take And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me.
we are. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And, uh, Good morning. We're in Matthew chapter 13. And we've been following the life of Christ as in the book, uh, through the uh, book of Matthew. And uh, this is the point that he, he starts using parables. It, the, up to this point, he has been really, really clear on, um, on his, in his teachings. Uh, in verse 16, it says, But blessed are you for whose eyes, for your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. For assuredly I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Um, as we get ready to get into the parable of the soils, one of the um, one of the things that I, as I was looking at this, I was thinking about you know just the illustrations that it was using the things. There's uh, several things to consider when Jesus starts moving into this and when we hear the teachings of Jesus Christ. One, the one number thing that we have is that we have free will that we apply to either the teachings of God, you know, that we, we have free will, period. And with free will, you either apply to believe what you heard or you choose not to hear what you just heard. And so there's always a choice. Anytime you come, you know, every time you come to church and every time you hear something in the Bible and through the scripture, you have a choice to make. All of us have a choice to make. And one of the things that Jesus is doing is he's driving us towards being fruitful in our Christian life so that we may understand what he has given and provided for us so that we might be able to stand strong in the things that he has promised to us. And so that's, that's where he is headed with this. So when we, when we see that, now there's another factor that comes into play here, and that the devil's always there. He's always there. And the devil's always going to try to sway to one way or another. And, you know, as we, as we think about this, you know, we, we, we kind of tend to think that we're independent in our choices of what we, of, you know, what, where we're going to move with the, the things that we hear. And what we need to do is ask the question is, you know, do, do I feel like moving in that direction or am I making a choice based on truth to make, to move in that direction? See, because a lot of people, when they come to church, some people tend to feel like, or some people feel like they want to, uh, they want to feel something. What well, feels good to come to church? And it does. You know, it's a good thing. There's some, some days that you go away with a feeling like, boy, that was just a great service. That was wonderful. I could feel the spirit. And that's all good. But one of the things that we need to do is we need to make a choice as well that I'm going to follow the Lord regardless of how I feel. Because what I'm basing my, 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 my life on is I'm a truth seeker. Yes. I want to know the truth of things. And I think this is where Jesus is really driving you know, a lot of the parables that are going to come up. Chapter 13 has several parables in it, and we're going to cover probably the first one, and then we'll cover several of them because they're shorter in, in sequence in the following weeks. But the, we'll get into we'll get into this uh, this the parables. Uh, and as he starts off, it says, "On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea." On the same day, on the same day of what? On the same day that he had this discourse. You know, starting uh, in, uh, that came through um, uh, chapter 12, you know, at that time. Um, and so uh, chapter 13 and 12, the same day, he's, he's discussing this. And there's a lot of people that are coming against Jesus at this time. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that are following him, but he, there's a lot of opposition that he is facing. And now he's going to be speaking to them in parables. And, and this is really great. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and a great multitudes were gathered together to him that he got into a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And that was, a, that was really a position of, the, of a rabbi, of a Jewish rabbi. A Jewish rabbi would normally sit down, and the, and the congregation would stand while, they, while he would teach. And that was one of the, uh, one of the uh, traditions that the rabbis would, you would see them have. Then he spoke and he said many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seed. Some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, and it did not have much earth, and it immediately sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun came up, 
they were scorched, and because it didn't have no root, it withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground, and it yielded crop, some a hundred, uh, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. And so, uh, so he gives that one parable. And the disciples came to him and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Okay? For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because... Seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do, they do, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. So I'm going to stop right there. And, and he gives us a real good clue. He says, look, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So I look at that and I think of, it's been given to us. It's been given to us to understand what we know God to know God's will and to know where God is going with the kingdom of heaven. But he says, I'm speaking to them in parables because to them it's not, it's not been given to know. And so it's shrouded. He says, it's been given to, because, in verse 11, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Now there's been a, uh, uh, you know, there, and when, you, when you think about some of the things that we're even looking at today, we can see that the will of God really clear in several things and several of the issues. We can see them very, very clear. I mean, God, God has given us the values of what you know, we need to value in His, in his teachings. You know, for example, the, you know, for example, it's the, uh, the teachings of creationism. You know, creationism. Again, we're, we're either going to accept creationism or we're not, or we're going to go ahead and accept some of, some of the evolutionary teachings, which isn't in there. I mean, evolution is a concept, but the evolutionary teaching as a religion or a, or a part of science, it's, it's, not, it's not there. And for Christians, for us to be able to do that, so he says, look, it's been given to, for you to know these things, and for some people it's been shrouded. So now you've got a communication pro uh, problem here that says, look, I know what I know because it's based on truth. And then there's others that don't know because their mind has been shrouded. And so we have to recognize the fact that that, that is there. That's absolutely there. And, and sometimes we say things, well, how can they do that? Look at how stupid it is. Isn't that obvious to them? <laughs> well, no. I never said that. It's, you never said that. <laughs> You know, we, we make those judgments, and the thing that I would like to go away with, you know, especially on this, on this portion, is to really give thanks to the fact that we know the truth. We, we know we've been given, we've been given the knowledge of what God has given to us, because we believe. And we have taken the Word of God and said, look, we understand the Word of God to be this. You know, when somebody, con when somebody com uh, comes, comes, in a, and, and comes in and argues with me on something or says, well, have you ever thought about that? And I thought, I'll say something like, well, that's an interesting thought. Where'd you come up with that? <laughs> you know, something like that. And, and just, try, just, try to, just try to work through some of that kind of stuff. But it's really important. And Jesus is looking at that and he's, he's really talking about sowing the word of God into our hearts. Now, as we look at the, at the parable of the sower, we have to look at the condition of our heart. Some of the, some of it, some of the seed that falls is going to fall on, on very, you know, it's going to fall by the wayside. It's just going to not even make it towards the heart. I mean, you hear it, but you don't hear it, and it's going to fall to the wayside. And he's going to explain this to the disciples here in just a little bit. You know, and then some, heart, some hearts are ready to receive. And, and he's going to go back over here, and he's going to, he's going to talk about this. Now, let's go back, before I get there, let's just follow along the scripture and see how it, how it works out. In verse 14, he says, And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. Hearing you will hear, and you shall not understand. Now, you know, there, there, are, there are so many, people sometimes tend, uh, tend to excuse the, the word of God by saying, you know, it's a matter of interpretation. 
You know, they excuse that. They excuse truth by saying, well, it's just the way that you interpret it. Well, no. Scripture interprets itself. <coughs> it does. If, if, you, if, you, if you go to study, if you go to study Scripture, you, you understand that Scripture can interpret, will interpret itself. It can do that. And it says, and he says, hearing you will hear and you shall not understand. Seeing you will see and not perceive. So there's a problem, you know, with, uh, with people that hear the word of God. For the heart of this people have grown dull. Now he, there he's hitting real hard on this. And as I'm speaking, I know that I'm speaking to a church. Not only here, but also out, you know, on Facebook and it, it gets out there. To me, the church is going woke for a reason. There's a reason that it's going woke. It's because they think they understand the intent of God on certain areas of life, and they open up their doors to every, every belief system and every lifestyle, and it's not acceptable by God. But yet they believe it to be true. And he says, look, for the heart of the people has grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they, are, they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their heart and turn so that I should heal them. Now, now he is talking to people in general because Jesus came to, to, to preach the gospel to the people out there in general. He, he, he came to preach the gospel. The truths of God are to go out to the world now that, <clears throat> now that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the whole world now the gospel is being preached so that it may be received by all people of all nations, tongues, tribe, and nations. Of everybody needs to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ and the intent of the kingdom of God. He really, it really does. He's saying, look, I'm giving you the mystery. I'm giving you the teachings of the kingdom of God, but people aren't taking and understanding it because they're dull of hearing. And because they're dull of hearing, you know, things like, you know, well, and you've heard the scriptures mis, mis, uh, misrepresented out there. Well, God says that you, you, know, you, you should love one another. So we should not deny anybody who, in whom they, should, they love. You know, with, with, you know, and you know what I'm talking about with the LGBTQ community. Well, if, if it's true that the kingdom of God has been preached out here, and, and if he's going to heal our land, if he's going to heal us, we need to understand what God is really saying. But again, we have a choice to make. Is that what God is really saying? That we need to call people to the truth of sexuality and how he designed it in the scripture? Or do we just throw it open and say, you know, it doesn't matter what happens out there. No, the sower goes out to sow the seed. And this is what happens to that seed as it is sown. And, I, and we have to understand that. And, and Jesus takes a real look even with his ministry, he knew that there was going to be some people that would would reject the gospel of Jesus, of the, the gospel of his, his message. There would be some people that would not fully understand his message. There would be some other people that wouldn't be dedicated to the message. And then there would be some other people that would take the full message in and fully give their lives to living that out. And so now you see a variation of Christianity, quote unquote, you know, out, the, out in our world today because of the variations of where, pe where people are in the way that they hear the Word of God. It's important to know your heart, folks. See, because the heart, in, in the next one, you know, he'll, he'll go into this. He said, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your, ears, your ears, for they hear. And I want to say that for, you know, for many of us. There's a lot of Christians out in the church world today that really, truly understand the Word of God. And then there are some that don't. And that's a fact. It's not, it's not a criticism against other people or anything else. That's what Jesus says. He says that's what's going to happen to a lot of people. Okay? That's, that's what's happening. For surely I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sword. Now, he's going to go off and start explaining the parable of the sword. Now, first of all, I want to give thanks to God that we have been chosen to come into the, 
And to come into the kingdom of God and understand what Jesus is really saying. I thank God every, you know, I thank God every day. You know, that God has shown to us, He has revealed to us the scripture. And the way, the, 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 you know, not, not, only, not only has He forgiven us of our sins through His sacrifice, that He has given us of, uh, eternal life through His resurrection, and then He has given us all of these promises, I thank God that He has called us and that we're able to come in and understand these things. He really has. He really has called us into that. And he, then he starts to describe this. He says, anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches it away, what was sown in his heart. This is he who has received the seed by the wayside. Anyone who hears the word of God and does not, uh, the, the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, and the wicked one comes and takes it away. Now these are these are these people are the, also the ones that will come against the church and those that believe the message of the kingdom of God. And and you know in our country we have seen the protests, we have seen certain things like with the abortion issue and some uh, some of those kind of things. And I think it's important that the church understand where we sit on sexuality and family, because this is what God has called us to. He really has called us to that to do that. And He says. And he says, but whoever receives the seed, so, so that's the seed of the kingdom that they're rejecting. Uh, folks, the gospel of God, the gospel of the kingdom affects everything. And you're going you're gonna to find it in some of the other parables. It affects everything. In fact, in one of the parables, the parable of the yeast, he said the kingdom, the, 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 the kingdom of God is like a man who takes 50 pounds of Flour. That's a lot of flour. Okay? And he says, and, 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 and puts yeast in that flour. And it says that the yeast will infect everything. That means that, 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 means that the message of, of the kingdom of God or the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just given to the church or that it should be excluded from any kind of uh, sector in society. You know, the, the message of the kingdom of God should affect um, of the business community. It should affect industry. It should affect politics. It should affect the arts. It should affect education. It should affect the medical field. It should have not only just us and our and family. It, it affects everything. Because it says the message of the kingdom of God is like yeast. It infects the whole lump. There's not one part of the lump there's not one part of the lump that is uh, left to itself. You know, I, I get asked a lot, you know, why is it that you, being a pastor, are, are involved in politics? Because the message of the kingdom of God, just the word in itself, kingdom of God, means government of God. And if you go over to Isaiah chapter 9, it says that the government, of, the government rests on Jesus' shoulders. You know, so it, it has a lot to do with what how we are governed as a people and how we treat one another and how how we are to you know have policy on how we how we treat one another in um, in a lot of a lot of different ways. And so yes, we need to be involved in that. So just uh, just just uh, I, I I throw that out there so you get an understanding on how what Jesus meant by the sower going out and sowing the seed. You know, uh, there's a I, there's a little book. I love the little book. I have a, I have uh, in my younger years, I went ahead and I went to art school, and I have an art degree. And as you know, in, in art, I wanted to just do all kinds of all kinds of arts. We did sculptures, we did fine arts, we did commercial art, we did all kinds of art just to experience the art world. And uh, and as I started getting involved in the uh, in, in Christianity being part of the Catholic Church, there was a lot of the art that was be, that had been rejected through the Reformation. Some of you know that. You know? And, uh, and there's a philosopher, theologian, and pastor, his name is Francis Schaeffer from Switzerland. Okay? He's got this little, little book. It's called Art and the Bible, which interested me a whole lot. See, because... If you, look at, if you look at the history of the church, you find out that what happened with the church 
is they went ahead and they rejected all forms of, litur of, of the liturgy. And they threw the baby out with bathwater in a lot of ways. So the church took on, you know, the word of God through Martin Luther, and they began to he began to preach the gospel of Jesus, the gospel, and begin to teach. And that was, you know, that the, the that was the beginning of Western civilization is what really took place. You know, the, the, the message of the gospel really really influenced the uh, Western Western civilization. And so as I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at church history, I realized that that God had, you know, that, that, the, that the church had thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Because now the modern church has rejected the sculptures. And, and, um, and much, but we have taken on the, the theater side of things. Yeah. We have taken on music. We have taken on the platform more than the arts. Okay, we, we have. Now, one of the things that Mark, uh, one of the things that Francis Schaeffer really takes the scripture and he shows us that we can still have, you know, statues in and around our our worship as long as we're not worshiping it, yes. we're worshiping the cre Creator. Yes. You know, because there's all this symbolism that happens. I mean, you know, we're we're surrounded by symbolism. Yes. If you look at that, so. There's a lot of symbolism here, and, and, and when you look at the scripture, it, it's, it's, a, it's a process. If you look at the scripture and you look at the duty of the church, it's a process of communication. It is a process of communication. Symbolism has an aspect of, of, of communication. There's a lot of symbolism that was shown in our music presentations today. You know, we saw the camels, we saw the three kings, we saw the star. That's all symbolism, folks. When Jesus said, the sower goes out and sows the seed, it's more than just our verbal communication. And folks, we've got to get much better at this because, you know, the enemy has taken on communication today and has used it to influence people away from the gospel. That's the first batch of seed that falls on the ground. He's used it to move people away from the gospel. I remember... If you remember, uh, about two years ago, it was talking about that the church was not essential. The church is not essential to our everyday living. And that was coming through Facebook time and time and time. I saw that over and over and over again. That was a message that was trying to get you to move away from church attendance. You know? And, and it's part of, part of the kingdom message. Part of the message of the kingdom of God is that when we come together, Jesus said, when we come together, when, when there's two or three gathered in my name, I am there in your midst. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, they, they were talking about this incest that was going on in the church and that they hadn't dealt with it. And Paul, Peter said, I mean, no, Paul said, he said, I am, I am, I am with you in spirit. For when you come together as a church, he said, the spirit of Jesus is present in your midst. Amen. Now, if you if you do any kind of study, theological studies like that, you know, I, I love coming to church. I can do all my reading, all my devotions and everything else. But when I come to church and we are singing together, we are partaking communion together and we're hearing the word of God together. It is called. It is called um, the. It, 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 it's, it's a Greek word called kerjima. It is what you experience in the spirit together. You do not experience it by yourself. It's it's experienced together as a church. See the teachings. So Jesus is saying the sower went out to sow seed, and if you look at the ministry of Jesus Christ, you find that his primary primary ministry you know, before he was crucified, was to teach the nation of Israel, to teach his disciples, to give them the information and to give them the expectations of what the kingdom was all about so that he could go ahead and, and have them go forward and teach it as well. You find that. So when you think about the sword going out and sowing the seed, it's much more than just, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, it's, it's 
valuing marriage. It's raising children. It's how to spend our money. It's how to treat one another. It's how to forgive one another. All of that's part of that. But in the full content of the context, you know, if the gospel doesn't affect the world and, and all of the governments in the world today, then we can take the book of Revelation and throw it away. Because at the end, every nation is going to be affected by the words that are, are written in this book. Amen. Amen? Amen? I want you to get the full concept of the sower going out and sowing the seed, first of all. That's the full, that's the first thing. You know, uh, because I'm an artist, art, if you study art, one of the things you find is that people, what they, what they believe in here comes forth in the expression of their art. Look at music. Music is an expression of what's in the heart. It's a form of art. It's a different kind of art. It's not a fine art. But look at a lot of the, uh, refer you know, a lot of the Reformation and the, uh, of coming, the, uh, the Age of Enlightenment where these people were coming out and they were putting together the sculptures of the, of the pita. The pita is the one where um, it, Mary is holding the, Jesus in her arms after he's been taken off, off of the cross. He's dead in her arms. How many of you remember seeing that one? You know, you're, you're, you're familiar with that. That was, uh, some of those sculptures, uh, some of those people were saying, I, what I had in mind was to give the full, the full, the full glory of what God had, in, you know, of, of that event that took place. I wanted to bring that to life with my skills and what I saw in my heart. Amen. So that's, that's also a form of, you know, of, of sowing seed, folks. When people look at that, they can see that Jesus was crucified and the bond that he had with his mother and his mother had with him. You know, there's just, so we, when we look at sowing the seed, it's, it's different. There's, how many of you know that we're affected by commercials? Oh, oh man, are we ever affected by commercials? You make you hungry. Oh yeah. The other, the other day we went out. The other day we went out and bought pizza. You know, just because the kids saw a, a, a commercial of pizza. But guess who made the money? It was Little Caesars. <laughs> I like them all. You know, I like GNF. I like R and R. But that day it was Little Caesars. You know, and I want, I want to give everybody. I want to give everybody a fair, a fair safety. <laughs> We're affected by the symbolism, folks. We're, affect, we're affected by the words that are out there. And Jesus knows that. And he said, seeing you see, but you don't, I mean, see, seeing you don't see and hearing you don't hear. We, we got to know that we're affected by all of this. And we have the challenge of being able to bring that out there. And Jesus understood how the, how the sowing of the seed was going was to take place. We're influenced by a lot of different things. Here it says that the seed fell on rocky ground on, 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 on by the wayside, and the devil came in and took it away. Oh, there are a bunch of crazy people over there. I don't want to ever go to that church again. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That, that's what happens. Now watch, watch this next one. So, so verse 20. But he who receives the seed on stony places is he who hears the word of God and immediately receives it with joy. I have seen this happen. I've seen this happen with a lot of people, you know. And um, I remember when I first received the Word of God, I was joyful. My, my salvation was a turnaround salvation. I mean, it was. I went from being really wicked and bad and everything else, and then all of a sudden, I felt the love of God in my heart. And, and I began to move forward. And it says, He who received the seed on stony ground is he who hears the Word of God and immediately receives it with joy. Okay? That's great. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're happy about it. Yet, he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution rises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Okay? So he, here's, a, here's a man that receives the word of God. Now, one of the things that he's encouraging us here is to examine our hearts and are you, are you, a, are you a long game Christian? This is not just a sprint. You, you just don't get saved and hallelujah, kumbaya, I'm going to heaven and now I go back to doing what I'm doing. Yeah, no, it's not like that. He said, look, this, this guy went ahead and received it and he was happy for a little while and you see many Christians like that. Over the 30, 
35 years or whatever I've had, almost 35 years, that I've had here. No, it's been 35 here. There was three other years in another church. <laughs> you know, you see a lot of people come and go, and then you wonder, what happened to them? Well, there was no root in them. They didn't have it. They didn't work on their endurance. They didn't work on really building roots. Amen. You got to build roots. You got to be able to water this and say, no, I don't care what the world, I don't care what people talk, you know, the people are saying to me because I'm a Christian. I don't care about the negativity out there. I don't care if I fail. I'm still going to, I'm still going to stick to this thing because I know that it involves my eternal life. My destiny and where I'm going to spend it. I'm going to make sure that I do everything to secure that. Yes. Many people will go ahead and put more, more uh, attend, give more attention to their wallets because of ID theft than to their salvation because of of, of uh, salvation theft. Yes. You know there it is. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he can steal some of the things and promises that God has given you. Yes. So we need to understand what's happening. Folks, we have to have that endurance. Make that commitment. Regardless of what happens, you're going you're gonna to be here. You want to you succeed? Do you want to be 100% Christian? 100% of, of a person that gives 100-fold of crop back. 100%er, 100%, 100 60%er, and 30%er. I want to be 100%, folks. I'll give you a secret to that. Is you just show up. That's all you have to do. Just keep showing up, regardless of what goes on around you. Find a good place that teaches the Bible and, and, and encourages you to, to live the life of a Christian and keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up. That's the success. I have found that there's, a, you know, in my lifetime, I saw a lot of pastors quit their ministries. And they quit, you know, coming, they quit their ministries because there was not enough money being paid. I'm not getting paid enough to go through all of this. <laughs> that ever comes out of your mouth, that means that you did not understand the call that God had given you. Because the call of God is what holds you. It holds you. You'll, you'll endure all kinds of things if you know what's there for you at the end. And if you know who called you. And why he called you. See, that's part of the sowing of the seed. Part of that sowing of the seed is the teaching that you receive in your life and you understand it. You see it with your eyes. But if you don't, you'll be a short-term, you'll be a short-run short, short Christian. I mean, your light will shine brightly and then poof, it's gone. And you think, what happened to that? And, and so, he, so he's, he's looking at that. And he says, he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises, where does that persecution uh, and uh, and tribulation come from? Well, it can come from the outside, okay? But it can also come from the inside, the church. A lot of times, you know, a lot of times people get hurt in churches if you allow yourself to be hurt. You can, you can be hurt inside the church. Don't allow what people do affect your destiny and fruitfulness in your life. You know, I, I, and, uh, uh, I, I tell people all the time, I said, you know, your opinion of me is not what I believe me to be. You know, because if, I, if I'm constantly looking at the opinion of others, man, I, I'd be a schizophrenic. Because <laughs> everybody has a different opinion of what I should be. I look at what God tells me I should be. Once you understand what God has told, has said you should be, the opinions of others do not matter one iota. Amen. It doesn't. I don't care if you think I'm, I'm the worst person on the whole planet. I know that I'm loved by God. Amen. I know that Jesus has given his life for me. I know that I am a son of God and I have an inheritance and one day I will judge angels. Yes. Yes. That's the kind of position I have. And I don't care, somebody may think less of me, but I won't allow them to affect what I think myself to be. Because God has already told me who I am. Amen. Amen. Folks, we need to stand on that. See how important it is, because persecutions and tribulations are going to come our way. They will come our way. Don't 
be a, a, you know, a short, a, 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 a shallow rooted plant. You know, that just kind of gets hot a little, there's going to be a little heat and then you fade away. Did you know that the saguaros, and I just remembered this, the Saguaro National Park, the big little trees and stuff like that, do you know that uh, they're, they, 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 do not, they do not do very well on their own? They're very, very, very tall. But if you put one, if they've said, made the studies, if you take one of those trees and you put it out on their own, their root system cannot support the heights, especially if they're strong winds. Why they stand so, so tall and have survived so long is because their roots are deep. They're deep, yes, but they're also intertwined. They support each other. See, our root system, my, you know, we all have roots. That's our heritage, folks. We have roots. It's our heritage. I have a Christian heritage. I celebrate Thanksgiving. I have a heritage. I celebrate Christmas. And I don't care about the Christmas deniers out there. You get to hear that a lot. Deniers. Deniers. <laughs> I don't care about the Christmas deniers out there. I have a heritage. Jesus was born, and he split history in half. That's part of my heritage. I believe that. I also have a heritage, and I celebrate Easter. That's my heritage. See, we've got to understand our roots. So the saguaros, what they do is they, they their, their, their roots are intertwined, folks. Yeah. Huh? Are you talking about trees? Did I say saguaros? Yes. Oh, it's the... Sequoias? Same different. The big trees. <laughs> the red big trees. <laughs> the sequoias? Okay. Sequoias. All right. I think we have a good. Y'all, y'all have to keep them in line sometimes. You know, that's why Jesus sent them out two by two. You know that. It's important. So that's that's the reason why the sequoias put their they, they, they are intertwined and they they support one another. We, you have to look at your lives, guys, and say, "Am I one that's going to endure or am I short term?" And then your life goes out; it's gone. Yes. And so we, we need to be able to stand together. Now, watch this one in verse twenty-two, and I've got to watch this one. And he says, "Now he who receives the seed, now remember the sowing of the seed." is the teachings of the kingdom of God. That's what he's alluding to, okay? He's alluding to that. Now, he who receives the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word of the, of the kingdom of God and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches ch and, and uh, chokes out the word and he becomes unfruitful. This is where you can worry about everything. You worry about... You know, you worry about the, the, the world, you know, the, 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 world, the, world, the wars that are happening around the world and how Ukraine is affecting the United States and on and on and on it goes. You worry about the politics and you have, you know, so then you become distracted in this one. You really, really become distracted. Rather than allowing the kingdom of God to come into the world, to be able to affect the world, now the world is affecting you. It's, that's, it's, it's, in, you know, it's in reverse. I go out to affect the world. I go out to see how we can affect the world and teach the world the teachings. I'm, I have become the sore when I go out and do that. Don't let the world come in and affect you in a very negative way that you now become worried about all kinds of things. A lot of people get worried about finances. I don't worry about finances that much. I really don't. But we have to re learn how to rely on God. Especially in the world today when they're telling you that we're in a recession. I mean, an inflationary uh, uh, session right now. When the truth is we are in a recession. And it could get worse. And everybody talks about how it can get worse. The diesel's gonna, not going to be available. Some of you guys that understand that and keep track of all that. God bless you. <laughs> you know, because all of that bad news out there can really distract you in being fruitful in the Word of God. Because it's choking you out. The fact is, is that we live in God's economy that says that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches. Now, I have to clarify something here, too. Is that we just don't go out willy-nilly, you know, spending all of our money thinking that God's going to supply for us 
Because, you know, we need to also save in case there's something happens. Mm -hmm. Just because he's going to provide our daily bread doesn't mean that we put a little bit aside in case we need something late for later on. That's wisdom. You know, look at, look at Joseph in the Old Testament. He went up to the Pharaoh and said, look, there's going to be a drought coming, and it's, a famine's going to hit after that, and it's going to be seven years of that. And the king asked him, you know, well, what do we do? He said, well, you better start growing, better start uh, storing up grain for now because you're going to have a season of plenty. And during the, t during the time of plenty, we think that we can spend it all. And he said, no, you take this amount, put it in the barn, so when we hit it, the, the famine, then you'll have some left. So we have to understand that as well. So he says, he who receives the, uh, the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world. Are you distracted by the cares of the world? And then put all your, all your, you know, put all your heart and your attention on that, rather than bringing it back home, back to back to the Lord, and and the teachings of Jesus. You know what we need to do. We need to be careful during, uh, you know, the, during the times that we get the cares of the world. The cares of the world will be will will breed will breed greed greed. The cares of the world will breed greed in your in your in our in, 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 in our society. People will tend to hold on to things and they would want to share. I've seen some of that. They don't want to share anything. They they isolate, boom, boom, you know, they don't get out involved. When when the when the Bible tells, tells us to share with one another, love one another, share with one another, take care of each other. Again, the roots. Again, being able to be strong as a community, that's going to be required as we move forward. And I, and I do believe that. And he says, um, uh, the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. Don't, don't, let, you know, don't let the materialism get a hold of your life. You know, and, and that's so easy to do. Yes, it is. I tell my wife every once in a while, I'm going to Walmart. She says, I'm going to Walmart. Do you need any, anything? And I'll tell her, yeah, get me one of everything. <laughs> Give me one of everything, you know, and it's just like, oh, and, and it's sometimes, you know, you just want, I, I want, I want, I want this, I want that. Give me that. I want a new car. I think my car works just fine, but I want one. You know, I want a different one. I need to experience something different. Uh, no, it still works. So we need to be careful with that. And the deceitfulness of riches choke out the word, and he becomes unfruitful. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people will go ahead and, um, you know, they quit. And I tell, I, I kind of look at this this way. You come to church and you worship, and then the giving plate goes along the, the line, and you put your tithes in there. Your tithes are ten percent that support the work of the church. Okay. If you don't come to church. And you have a free day on Sunday. And a lot, I hear a lot of people, that's my only free day that I have. And I'm thinking, and that's what you're doing? You're going to Walmart on your free day? And what you're doing is you're taking your money and you're putting it in the cash register at Walmart. And you're paying homage to Walmart. Oh, great, Walmart. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, When you have the ability to worship the God of gods, the creator of all the world, the God who is the great I am, who created us in a time and space capsule, okay? He created the time and space capsule. He sits outside of this capsule. He is infinite. He is without time, without beginning, without end. He can see the, be he can see the beginning. Because he's sitting outside of the time cap, so he can see the events that are going to transpire before they happen. Because he's creator. And you don't have the time for him? And when you take an hour and a half of your time on Sunday and say, God, help me the rest of the week, you have just connected to the guy that sees the future. Everything that, every, everything that you can succeed in is attributed to him, and I want to make sure that I am worshiping him and saying, God, help me Amen. for the next week. Because yep. he can accomplish in three minutes what I can, I can barely accomplish in three years. Yep. <laughs> Boom! It's done. 
How many of you have witnessed some of that kind of stuff in your life? I love it when I can say, God did it. And God has done some things just this past week in my life. It's just, uh, 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 look at that. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> it's just amazing. It is just amazing what God can do. And, not, and God, God is not only just an, you know, he just doesn't add something. Here, you, here, here here's your meal for today. You know, here, yeah. here, here's, a, here's a salad for you. No, he provides the whole garden, the whole cows, everything for you. You know, he's a multiplier. God is a multiplier. Something was dropped into my lap this week. It was just amazing. And um, my influence went from here to here. That's the possibility that I have right now. And, and we're starting to work this thing, you know. And uh, some of the teachings that I have will be able to get out there in an amazing way. It's just amazing. And I can't tell you about it just yet, but I will eventually. <laughs> I will. I will we tell know you. you will. Yeah. It, 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 it. Now, so be careful. He says he becomes unfruitful. We, we need to be fruitful Christians. I enjoy my life. I enjoy the promises that he has given me. I enjoy the results that I see in my life. Because of what he has done. Now, we older Christians can give you that testimony. See? And say, this is who God is. This is what he has done. You know? Uh, the problem is, is that we have free will. And it, what amazes me is that a two-year-old has free will. You know? <laughs> and God created them. Their first word out of their mouth is, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> what was God thinking when he did <laughs> Then they get to be teenagers. He gives us free will, folks. Yeah. We have to decide. Watch this. From verse 23. <laughs> but he who receives the seed or the teachings of the kingdom of heaven, all of them, that affect every aspect of our lives and that affects everything, in heaven, in earth, and under the earth, in, including politics. Okay? Yeah. He who receives the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. Hears the word and understands it. Oh, I see. Now I see my part in the whole landscape of whatever it is that I'm looking at. I see how, you know, God put, God gave, God gave me, you know, I wasn't born in Mexico. I was born in the United States. And I, and, I, and I thank God for that. I really do. But more than that, I celebrate my citizenship in heaven. Amen. I have dual citizenship in heaven and on earth. Paul talks about his Roman citizenship. Yeah. And he used it to his advantage. Yeah. He did. I do the same thing. I understand my citizenship. I understand. I understand my heavenly citizenship, and I also understand my earthly citizenship. And I will use it to my full advantage to promote the kingdom of heaven <coughs> anywhere I can. Anywhere I can. Okay. So he says, "He who hears the word of God and understands it is he who indeed bears fruit and and produces. Some will produce a hundredfold." That's the kind of Christian I want to be. I want to be that one. I know that I fail, and I, you know, we all do that kind of stuff, but I want to produce 100, 100 fold. Some will produce 30, 30 fold, a 60 fold, and then some will produce 30 fold. Okay? What kind of Christian do you want to be? See, the seed is being sown, and it is being brought to you. God tells us. Who we are as a Christian church. Who we are as Christian families. How we should educate our children. That one gets me. See, because sometimes, sometimes we pigeonhole things. You know, oh, I can, you know, I'm a Christian. I've come to church and everything. And then we send our kids to a, you know, a secular school where they're teaching them. They're indoctrinating them in a lot of different ways. In ways that goes contrary to to the seed that we're trying to not only sow in our own hearts, but into their hearts. And I'm thinking, but now we have a choice. Yeah. Then, 
with the ESA, parents can now in Arizona can take their children to any school that they want. They can also afford their children to go to homeschool if they want and be paid for it as well. That is an option. That's a choice. Now, how, how fruitful are we going to be? 160 or 30? See, we all have those choices. That's where free will comes in. I've got a choice between good and evil following the kingdom or flowing along with the world. It's amazing how that goes. My choice is do my best to follow the kingdom of heaven because I want to get the best that God can afford us. Amen. He said that there's a whole lot up there and I want to get every bit of it. Yes, I'm, yes. in that aspect, I want, to, I want everything. Give me one of everything, Lord. <laughs> forget Walmart. Yeah, forget Walmart. Yeah, don't, don't even think of Walmart. Because there's a whole lot more there. Yep. Amen. It is amazing, folks. It is amazing. It is amazing. And, I, you know, and, and God gives us, every once in a while, he'll give us a little glimpse that says, this is yours. Mm -hmm. This is because of me. Boom. There it is. The other day I walked into a the other day I walked into a room and there must have been a hundred and I don't know, maybe 100, 100, 175, maybe two hundred people walked in there and the the shouting and clapping and the roar of just appreciation. It was just like what is that? What is that? And it surprised me because all I was doing was the invocation. <laughs> it surprised me. I went back away from that and I thought, why, Lord? What is that? What was, what's that all about? What is that? And I have to give glory to the Lord on that. I have to give glory to God in, in those areas. What that makes me do, too, is that I look at those folks just like I do you and understand that I've got to walk the line and be successful. Because not only do you, re do you rely on me, but they do too, out there. Mm -hmm. And and we need to be fruitful. It, and sometimes that scares me. <laughs> it scares me. And, and it's just kind of like, wow, this is amazing. See, because people are looking for better times. The only thing that's going to make it better is going to be <laughs> us following the kingdom of God. Us being very determined in our heart, understanding that our heart can be hard, it can be shallow, it can be surrounded by all of this opposition and distraction and that stuff, or you are focused to bring forth fruit for Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Amen. that's that's it. That's where you're at. You've got to evaluate your own hearts. You're not going to stand in my presence. You don't have to have my approval. All I'm doing is I'm just a messenger. I'm just delivering the mail. <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to uh, stand before God one of these days, not me or anyone anybody else. Yes. And that's that's what we need. We need that more and more in our culture today. We need to bring back. We need to bring the nation back, the people back to God, if it's yes. going to survive. We're, we need to bring the nation back to the Lord, yes. if it's going to survive. Yes. In anything, you know, we need to bring back our families if they are to survive. Back to God. You know, we need to be, bring the, our businesses back to God if they're going to survive. Yep. They do. Yes. Look at Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. Chick-fil-A Chick is, is dedicated to the Lord. There's scriptures on their cups, you know. And they, and they were the first ones to go ahead and start paying their, their employees $15 an hour, even before it was requested. Same thing with Hobby Lobby. They're Christian, Christian, Christian owners. Some of you used to work for Hobby Lobby. And, and they started paying $15 an hour, and they give you Sundays off. My son got a job at Chick-fil-A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In Colorado. Yeah, and, and that's what they do. See, people, we need to get those things back. Yeah. God bless you. I enjoy teaching you. I, I enjoy presenting the gospel to you guys, and, and just the teachings. You get to be able, I'd like to take what you read and then expand it so that you get to be able to live it out there. And, and the Lord is good to us, he is so good to us. We've got to be able to continue. We just have to continue to move forward and uh, and call on each other, keep each other moving forward, and, and hold each other accountable. And that's not not a bad thing. I like. I've always had mentors in my life. Always, 
I've always had mentors in my life. And even now, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the Capitol, I have several folks that are Christians, but I've got three of them that, are, that have become very close mentors. I can trust them, and their, their, uh, their counsel has been good counsel, biblical counsel, solid counsel. And so, and I've given them the permission. You see me strain off. You better, you better get to me. You know, don't let me do that. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. We have one song to sing, and then we'll be dismissed. So let's go ahead and stand as we get, as we get ready to dismiss. <laughs> I don't need pace no more. <laughs> <laughs>